it's been one of the most talked about sailing events ever and it's happening right here on San Francisco Bay and nobody has a clue what's going to happen. This month on Mainsail we witness what is arguably the greatest America's Cup final in its 162 year history as New Zealand take on the might of the USA for the oldest trophy in world sport. Wow, New Zealand almost capsized. For the last three years, we've been following an extraordinary story. And now here in San Francisco, we're about to enter the final chapter. At its core has been sport at the highest level. But the 34th edition of the America's Cup has been about far more than that. The jury is still out on how this America's Cup will be remembered. It's attracted massive criticism and controversy. But with just days to go to its conclusion, this America's Cup could still go down in history as one of the greatest editions ever. The America's Cup is about just two teams, challenger and defender. Win the cup and you become defender. The world is out to take you down. But as defender, you also hold all the major cards. And when his American Oracle Racing Team won the cup in 2010, Billionaire Larry Ellison was up for changes. We have to have uh, fast boats uh, and we have to have teams of uh, sailors that will push those boats to the limits. At the heart of the plan, an extraordinary new boat, a 72-foot wing-powered multi-hull. But as Ellison's team found out, this was a sailing machine that could bite back. The last thing you ever want to do is put your mates in, any, in a bad situation or in, into any danger. We were very, very fortunate that everyone did walk away. Oracle USA were off the water for nearly four months, a massive setback for the Cup Defender. But put into perspective, when a Challenger's team member was killed in training. Well, we obviously had a tragic day today on the bay, and our thoughts and prayers are with Bart Simpson's, Andrew Simpson's family, his wife and kids. We will look at everything from the times that we sail, the amounts of wind we sail in, various parts of the design. We have a, an open book as to what we're going to look at. With new safety measures in place following the tragedy, three challengers battled for the right to face Ellison's Oracle Team USA in the final. Emirates Team New Zealand won. The stage is set. The 34th America's Cup will have Emirates Team New Zealand, the challenger. And the Kiwis would take on a team bruised by a pre-event punishment. Oracle Racing was given a two-point penalty after team members were found guilty of misconduct in the build-up series. And in a contest where the winner is the first to win nine races, crossing the first start line at minus two was a massive setback. What message do you have to your supporters who must have been so shocked by the jury decision? There's nothing I can do today to change the jury decision. Uh, we've got one thing to focus on, and that's the racing coming up. There are just 24 hours until the first match. The two skippers, Dean Barker and Jimmy Spittle, each with the weight of expectation, heavy on their shoulders. This is going to be a career-defining regatta for both of these guys. Everything's at stake, you know, because Dean, you know, if he doesn't win this one, he's, he knows he's out. And then you've got Jimmy Spittle, he's working for Larry Allison. Everyone that's with Larry knows that either you succeed or you don't, and if you don't, you're not there again. There's been enough stuff happen on the land and now the boys are saying, OK, now it's time to get on the water. Everyone says, oh, yeah, we've got a two-point advantage. Well, all it means is that we have to still go out and win nine races. It's no, no different for us. It's hard to believe the two boats are going to be that evenly matched if it goes all the way down to the wire. Nobody knows for sure who's going to win this. You know, that element of intrigue, that element of uncertainty, it's what makes these sporting competitions great.
It's day one of the 34th America's Cup Finals here in San Francisco. The duel is about to begin. What an atmosphere. And it's advantage New Zealand before a match has even been sailed. But that advantage could be swept away fast because it will all come down to who has got the fastest boat and the sailors that can handle it. One team will have got it right and walk away with the oldest trophy in world sport. And the other team could be looking down the barrel of a hundred million dollar investment, potentially much more, all for nothing. And we could find out who's got it right and who's got it wrong out there later today. San Francisco, California, the setting for the greatest showdown in sailing, the final for the 34th America's Cup, the oldest trophy in world sport. Oracle Team USA are defending against Emirates Team New Zealand, and it's day one. But what is really exciting today is the tension. Nobody knows who has the fastest boats until in a few moments' time when the race starts. It's Oracle Team USA to lured Emirates Team New Zealand to win as they approach the line for the start of race number one of the 34th America's Cup. Looks like they might have a slight edge who will get into the zone at mark number one first. This moment is huge and it belongs to Emirates Team New Zealand. For the first leg, Team New Zealand, they're literally flying, edging ahead of Oracle. It's really exciting. Well, we did say it was going to be a close race, and check that out. That's the closest cross we've seen. It's neck and neck, and although in many ways this America's Cup has changed out of all recognition, it's still two boats fighting hard. There's the cross. Oracle Team USA have done it. A lead change, and the Americans are now in the lead. Oracle have just overtaken Team New Zealand. There's nothing in this. Let's go. Go, go, go. Have a look at that. It is another lead change. Now New Zealand's out in front. Oh, this race has got everything so far. How good is this? This is what we've been waiting for for two months, and finally we've got it. The lead changed a few times, closer than many people predicted. But when the Kiwis got free, perhaps the nerves calmed down. They look like they might just have something special. The first race of the America's Cup goes to Emirates Team New Zealand. Always nice to get the first point under, you know, under the belt. I think what we saw there was one hell of a yacht race. Race two and the Kiwis went out and won again. Emirates Team New Zealand goes up 2-0 over Oracle Team USA. And with the hopes of a nation resting on his shoulders, it was a massive moment for skipper Dean Barker. I think there's a lot of relief in a lot of ways. I think it was just nice to, to go out there to race and to, to actually find that we were able to, uh, to match up with them in terms of speed. The next morning, I head to the Oracle USA base. It may have been my imagination, but it felt a very different place to the one I had visited hours before the cup started. Their two races down, already. It seemed yesterday that the problems weren't with the speed of the boat, but with how it was being sailed. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, yeah, I mean, sports, you have, you have good days and bad days, and, you know, unfortunately, they didn't start well yesterday, and, and then, um, you know, probably, you know, it was a bit of a, a surprise to see, you know, Team New Zealand sailing that, that um, sort of mode upwind. Um, as much as what they did, so so that was a good lesson, and, and you know I think we can respond to that today. Oracle went out and were second best again, but then delivered their first race win. What a relief! What a moment for the Americans! They know they have done it. Race number four belongs to Oracle Team USA. It was an important moment for Oracle Racing and a psychological boost for this skipper. Jimmy, I almost felt your relief from the shore when you won that last race. The guys were fired up. I mean, it says a lot about this team to come back from, you know, a tough loss from the first race today. That's what this team's about. You know, they never give up and um, they're always thinking about the next race and history's history. 
let's focus on the next race. What Oracle Team USA needed now was momentum. They started the next race well and looked like they had that momentum, but it was short-lived. This is really interesting tactics by Oracle. I don't really know what they're doing right now, to be honest. The lead is almost 1,500 meters, and folks, in match racing, that has got to be unprecedented. Once the Kiwis were ahead, Oracle were history. There's nothing they can do now but watch the Kiwis pick up yet another win. It was a crushing defeat. New Zealand were over halfway towards winning the cup, while despite their race win, Oracle Racing were still sitting on minus one. It was time for the Americans to do something radical. Spittel consulted with his boss out on the water. They pulled a surprising move. Um, Oracle have just asked for their uh, postponement, oh, so uh, that's it for the day. Both teams are allowed to play one postponement card, designed to help in the event of breakage. This was a move of desperation. It was obvious we need to uh, really regroup and, and, and have a good look at the video and what's going on out there. Unless we make some changes, there's a real chance we weren't going to win the second race of the day. And, um, you know, we, we have to do what we can and we will. Kiwi skipper Dean Barker was shocked by Spittle pulling out. You know, it's a bit cool because now they're exposed, any gear damage or whatever, they, they uh, potentially forfeit two points on a day, and so it's a, it is a big risk that they've um, taken. How much can they change? They've got, they've got tomorrow and racing the next day. It's got to be, I mean, there's got to be crew changes, is not there? Well, you know, you've, you've, really, you've really got uh, two options. You've got appendages, so your dagger boards or rudders, and elevator combination, um, or you've got crew. You know, really, there's not terribly much else they can do. I headed to the Oracle base again. Decisions they make tonight may decide if they are still in the game or not. I see their boat being worked on, engineers looking for extra speed. And I meet the man who could be called into action. The greatest Olympic sailor of all time has until this point been playing a supporting role. When you're a, a racer, a racing sailor, of course you want to be out there racing, but. The America's Cup is about a team, it's not about individuals, it's about putting the best team out on the water, collectively trying to get these boats going as quickly as possible. Now Ben, you've been tune-up helmsman for Jimmy. Is that the only position that, that you'd be able to do or you would consider doing on the boat? I came into this team aware that my role was to support Jimmy Spithill and to, to helm the second boat. Um, and you know, I've been happy to fulfill that role, but uh, if, if that changes, then of course I'll, I'll step up to it. The next race does see Ainsley on board, replacing tactician John Kostecki, not the position that the British sailor is used to. John Kostecki on the left-hand side. The man on the right is Sir Russell Coots, probably the man that made the decision to change out Kostecki for Sir Ben Ainsley. they got to hope that this change to tactician spot pays off or things are going to go bad really fast. And with Ainsley on board, it looked like his four gold medals were making the American boat shine as they led the next race around Mark 1. But their lead was short-lived. The Kiwis went on to win both races of the day. It will be the Kiwis striking again. Over the next four matches, Oracle were able to claw back two more victories, but were slipping into a deficit that looked unrecoverable. There was a tense moment for Emirates Team New Zealand when their whole campaign hung in the balance. Uh, New Zealand almost captured. Oh, they almost flipped this thing over. But despite losing a second race, the Kiwis continued to inch their way closer to their ultimate goal. Emirates Team New Zealand will pick up the victory. Day number eight, race number 11, belongs to Emirates Team New Zealand. So the Kiwis are now on the precipice of taking away the America's Cup from Oracle Team USA. Every one here is just so hard. You're just monumental battles. You know, if we can get one more, well, that'll be, uh, that'll be very cool. In New Zealand, the champagne was on ice. The Kiwis had eight races to get just one more win. The next time these two boats are out on San Francisco Bay, the winner of the America's Cup could be decided. It's the final of the 34th America's Cup in San Francisco. 
And after 11 races, Emirates Team New Zealand are on match point. They lead 8-1 against the defenders Oracle Team USA. The Kiwis are within tantalising distance of winning the oldest trophy in world sport. To me, the America's Cup is, is almost a duty and something that, that our country needs to get back and, and, and put right. I have, certainly have passion, but single-mindedly to win. I don't actually care about any other process in the, at the moment other than trying to win it. The whole of New Zealand will be holding its breath. A nation that has waited for this moment for a decade. Just what are we going to see from Oracle Team USA? Because today could be their last throw of the dice. To prevent Team New Zealand from taking the cup home, the Americans had to win the next eight races straight without faltering. And at mark number one, it's the Americans with the lead in a do or die situation here in San Francisco. Oracle are leading at the first mark. American supporters are holding their breath. Can they defend this? The Americans with the slight advantage over Emirates Team New Zealand in a must win situation. By the third mark, Oracle had extended their lead. Their determination not to lose translated into textbook sailing. So the Americans will come to the line and they will extend this series. Oracle Team USA gets the win in race 12. The boys are really focused today and uh, just really accepting the challenge. So we're straight on to the next one and that's how we're going to treat it, one after the other. Oracle had bought themselves another chance. But in the next race, New Zealand fought back hard. They sailed to a commanding lead. Surely it was time for New Zealand to stand and celebrate. The lead is more than 1,200 metres to Emirates Team New Zealand. One win away from taking the America's Cup. Then came a stunning blow. The race limit is 40 minutes, and in the light winds, the Kiwis had run out of time. Just two minutes sailing from victory. Very uh, frustrating day, to be honest. You know, I think we sailed a pretty uh, solid first race. You know, it's disappointing to, uh, you know, to be that close, but so far away. This cup had been truly a roller coaster ride for both teams and the balance was about to change again. The Oracle racing boat was suddenly much faster. The crew had become more confident. The package seemed invincible. Jimmy Spithill and company accelerated the line and they are the first ones to mark number one. The pressure is mounting by the minute. In the most extraordinary comeback in the event's history, Oracle was in charge. They'll just be happy with that, getting the victory and extending this regatta into day 14. The unbelievable was coming true. Race after race, Team New Zealand were unable to find the solitary win they so badly needed. It's Team New Zealand desperately need to get out of this losing streak if they are to win the cup. And by race 18, the unthinkable happened. We are all even at eight. With one race to determine the 34th America's Cup, it will be winner take all. It's the most exciting day of all of our lives, and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Mate, bring on tomorrow. Oracle had come back with seven straight race victories, and the America's Cup final would be decided in the next race. Dean Barker had to stay positive in a scenario he could never have imagined. The wind is good, we are all clear. Race 19, one race for it all. Such a critical moment in this race. Oh, oh they both Oracle. have huge skids piled in by Oracle. Emirates Team New Zealand gets the whole shot. Oracle takes a big dip, how much will that hurt them? Just a boat length separated the teams as they sped towards Mark II. They were just seconds apart. New Zealand won the start and led the early phase of this huge stakes race. But Oracle had something special. Their boat was now simply faster upwind. And at this point on the race course, the Americans have taken the lead by 20 metres. Big cross with the Americans having the right of way and they will make the cross. That means that's about a three boat length gain in over the last minute and a half. It's a big jump for Oracle. And the Americans never looked back. They just went on increasing their lead. 
The Stars and Stripes say it all. The comeback of 2014 is complete. America's Cup will stay in America. Oracle had made the greatest comeback in America's Cup history. We'll be facing the barrel of the gun at 8-1. And what do these guys do? They don't even flinch. And, uh, man, just a fantastic team effort. Dean Barker and his crew could only look back at what could have been. I'm incredibly proud of uh, our team and what they've achieved. Um, I'm gutted that we didn't uh, didn't get the last one that we needed to take this cut back to New Zealand, and you know, it's just uh, you know, it's very hard to. Hard to swallow. I mean, the greatest comeback in sports history. This is a lot about a team, a lot about the character, the heart, and the fight they've got inside them. Man, it was worth every single part of it. There were many question marks coming into this America's Cup about the boats being too expensive, too big, too radical, that no one would watch the racing. But the 34th America's Cup final has been such a spectacle of sport that it has silenced almost all of the critics. To me, it was actually a human story where one group of men were so close to winning a prize, not just for themselves, but for their passionate nation, only to be overhauled by the might of the American team, with the winning post literally meters away. When the emotions die down, we will be left to reflect that Larry Ellison did have a bold and controversial dream for this cup. And I think that that dream has changed this sport forever. <laughs>